Welcome back. I'm reading Chapter 21, A Brother's Burden. A wave of Alex's destructive vines chased after Connor, his friends, and the fairy council as they ran through the New York City streets. The fairies zapped the approaching plants with enchantments to keep them off their tail, but every time they destroyed one vine, a dozen grew in its place. It's like Manhattan is sinking into the thornbush pit, Connor said. What's a thornbush pit? Bree asked. It's a dangerous sinkhole in the fairy tale world, Connor explained. Alex and I had to go inside it to retrieve an item for the wishing spell. You know what's funny? After all this, that seems like a good memory. Speak for yourself, Froggy said. Luckily, the group came to an intersection and crossed paths with Arthur the Knights of the Round Table and Cornelius. They too were on the run from the atrocious vines covering the city. The unicorn carried Rook's body on his back. The knights had covered him with candy wrappers from the witch's base. Did you find Alex? Arthur asked. We did, Red said. As you can see from the demonic plants covering the city, it didn't go so well. A witch ordered Alex to destroy the world, starting with the city, Connor said. We're trying to get off the island so we can come up with a plan to stop her. Eventually, they reached the Hudson River on the west side of Manhattan. Merlin transformed a pigeon into a small ferry, and everyone quickly boarded it and sailed down the river toward Liberty Island. Connor was virtually speechless as he watched Alex's magic consume the city beside them. His sister had come a long way from the bookworm in Mrs. Peter's sixth grade classroom. The ferry docked on Liberty Island and Connor reunited with his friends and characters from the St. Andrew's Children's Hospital Commissary. Charlotte and Bob were overjoyed to see that Connor and his friends were safe. They charged through the crowds on the island and gave him a huge hug. All the pirates, superheroes, archaeologists, and cyborgs appeared to be in great spirits given the circumstances, but their demeanors quickly changed when they noticed the body on Cornelius' back. What happened? Bolt asked. Rook saved Alex's life, Connor informed them. He stepped in front of a sniper's bullet before it hit her. My goodness, Bob said, his poor father. Where's your sister now? Charlotte asked. She's currently destroying the biggest city in the United States, Connor said. You know, typical teenage stuff. His mother let out a frustrated sigh. Is there nothing we can do to stop the curse? Nothing worth mentioning, Connor said. Lester swooped toward Liberty Island with Jack, Goldilocks, and Hero on his back. Everyone was relieved to see that the parents had rescued their child from the witches, and Jack and Goldilocks were thankful that their friends had gotten out of the city on time. There you are, Jack said. We circled the park but couldn't find a place to land. The whole city is covered in vines. Tell me about it, Connor said. What happened to all the witches? We took care of most of them, but a few might have escaped the city, Goldilocks said. Any luck with Alex? Connor shook his head. I wish I had better news. I do. Froggy and I got married, Red announced. Oh, and I also killed Mariana with a hand mirror. I know an afternoon of murder and matrimony sounds awfully tacky, but it was quite lovely. Froggy looked down at Jack and Goldilocks' newborn son, and a wide smile stretched across his face. This must be Hero, he said. I keep forgetting you haven't met him yet, Goldilocks said. Hero, this is your uncle Froggy. She passed the infant into Froggy's arms. Froggy's eyes became extra glossy with the sight of his nephew. Hero stared up at Froggy like he was the most fascinating thing he'd ever seen. He's beautiful, Froggy said. You should have seen what he looked like when he came out, Red whispered. I didn't eat for days. While the two were being introduced, Connor was shocked to see that the majority of the, the literary army was scattered across Liberty Island. The card soldiers from Wonderland and the pirates from Neverland sat on the ground in handcuffs. The Winkies guarded the prisoners, although Connor couldn't put his finger on it. There was something very different about them, like the light had returned to their eyes. The flying monkeys were twitching, covered in static electricity, and lay across the grass, virtually comatose. But Connor noticed a difference to them, too. He saw that Bluebo was snuggled up in his parents' laps, happily picking the bugs off their bodies. Wait a second, did you guys defeat the entire literary army without us? Connor asked with an excited smile. We sure did, Peter Pan announced. The Dalai Lama's crew and I fought pa Captain Hook and his pirates on the top of the Empire State Building. Auburn Sally sliced off his hand and the captain fell to his death. The mad moth roared like a triceratops to remind Peter of its involvement, which startled everyone on Liberty Island. Oh, and the bliss worm hatched from its cocoon and saved Tinkerbell, Peter added. That's the bliss worm, Bree said. Boy, and I thought my imagination was warped. What else happened while we were in the park, Connor asked. Bolt electrocuted the flying monkeys on the Chrysler building, Blaze bragged about his brother. 
The Merry Men and the Lost Boys defeated the Wicked Witch at the Lincoln Center, Bull Rogers said, and once she was dead, the Winkies and the Monkeys were free from her magic spell. I've made many women melt in my day, but she was the first one to actually dissolve, Robin Hood said. The Tin Woodman beheaded the Queen of Hearts in Washington Square Park, and our cyborgs captured her card soldiers, Commander Neuter said. Bree couldn't help noticing that Trebella and the Tin Woodman were holding hands. What's going on with you two, she asked. Are you guys like a thing? If we must define our relationship in your uncivilized monster terms, then yes, we are a thing, Trobella said. I've spent my whole life longing after Butterboy, but it turns out what I really needed was a butter tray. Connor was bursting with so much pride for all that his friends and characters had accomplished, he didn't have room to be disturbed by Trobella and the Tin Woodman's new relationship. But who told you how to defeat the literary army, he asked. I mean, even I would have had to consult a librarian. Your mom did, Bolt said. Connor was pleasantly surprised to hear it. Really? At first, we didn't know what to do either, Charlotte said. Then I thought, what would Alex and Connor do if they were in my shoes? So I took a page from your book and wrote a story about meeting James M. Barry, L. Frank Baum, and Lewis Carroll. I splashed the pages with a few drops of portal potion and stepped into the beam of light and asked the authors how to defeat their characters. And what did they say? Sir James N. Barry said Captain Hook's greatest weakness was revenge and that he'd never give up a chance to get even with Peter Pan for cutting off his hand. Mr. Baum said the Wicked Witch of the West was so evil she would be melted by water, so it's nice to know the movie depicted something correctly. Lastly, Mr. Carroll said the Queen of Hearts would never pass up an opportunity to chop off a unique head. I relayed all the information to Arthur, and he put the plan into motion. Over the years, Charlotte had given Connor plenty of reasons to be a proud son, but hearing how she acquired the information necessary to defeat an entire army definitely took the cake. However, before Connor could shower his mom with praise, he suddenly froze and went dead silent. Her methods had given him an idea. Oh my gosh, she said, I know how to break the curse. I know how to save my sister. Connor instantly had everyone's attention. Even Hero was interested in what he had come up with. But before Connor shared his plan, he ran to the edge of Liberty Island and looked across the river at the Manhattan skyline. Most of the island was covered with the sister vines, but Alex herself was nowhere to be seen. I need a better view of the city, Connor said. Lester, could you give me a lift to Lady Liberty's torch? The giant gander leaned down so Connor climbed on his back. Bree's curiosity got the best of her and she hopped aboard Lester too. They flew to the very top of the Statue of Liberty, and Lester dropped the teenagers off on Lady Liberty's torch. So, Bri asked, how are you going to break the curse? Connor shrugged. Oh, I have no idea. Then what's your secret plan, she asked. I'm going to ask someone who does have an idea, he said. But first, I need to know exactly where Alex is. Otherwise, the plan isn't going to work. They scanned the city like it was an ancient text. Finally, they spotted Alex drifting through the buildings of downtown Manhattan. She flew to a top of Freedom Tower and watched her vines spreading through the streets below. The lion statues climbed the sides of the towering skyscraper and joined her. Great, she's landed, Connor said. If we can just get her away from those statues, I might have a shot at saving her. Suddenly, something moving in the Hudson River caught their attention. A small boat painted with the camouflage colors was speeding up the river. The boat docked on Liberty Island, and they watched as General Wilson, a dozen Marines, and a very familiar old woman climbed onto the island. Cornelia? Bree said in disbelief. But what the heck is she doing here? Connor and Bree quickly climbed aboard Lester, and the gander transported them back to the ground. By the time they arrived, all the characters had gathered around Cornelia, the general, and his Marines. I'm here on urgent business, so everyone listen carefully, General Wilson said. I don't know who you people are, where you're from, or why you're in my country, but you all need to return home immediately. Seriously, Gunther, Cornelia berated him. Do you really expect people to respect you when you address them like that? Not all of us are Marines, you know. The general did his best to ignore her remarks, but everyone could tell they were getting under his skin. Less than an hour, the United States military will be dropping a nuclear weapon on the city of New York, he announced. Unless you want to be caught in its detonation range, you must leave this island at once. What? Charlotte gasped. You can't nuke the city, Connor yelled. My sister's still over there. I'm sorry for your loss, but the decision has been made, General Wilson said. This is exactly what I warned you about, Gen uh, Gunther, Cornelia said. Had you just listened to me when I first told you about the portals to the other dimensions, none of this would be happening right now. The general's nostrils flared. Cornelia, I invited you here to help me communicate with these people, not reprimand me in front of them. 
You invited me here, she asked. Forty armed guards show up at my house in the middle of the night, pulled me out of bed, and threw me into the back of a jeep. If that's your definition of an invitation, I'd hate to see how you arrest someone. Cornelia, how do you and the general know each other, Bree asked. We used to date, Cornelia explained. I spent years trying to warn him about the portal between worlds, but no matter how much interdimensional evidence I gathered, he never took the sisters Grimm seriously. And now here we are, minutes away from destroying the greatest city in the world. This is not the time to say I told you so, the general barked. I don't need to say it, Cornelia snapped. It's abundantly clear. Okay, time out, Connor shouted. Obviously you two have issues that never got resolved, but can we go back to the part about nuking New York City? That can't be the only option. General Wilson pointed across the river at the vines, demolishing the buildings throughout downtown. We have to stop that from spreading to the rest of the world, he said. Unless you've got a better idea, the army will be dropping a nuke in 35 minutes. Connor glanced at his sister from the top of Freedom Tower. His plan to free Alex from the curse would be the most difficult mission in his life, but he would rather die trying to save her than do nothing and watch her perish. Actually, I do have a better idea, he said. Who's got a pen? I'm going to stop there and I'll continue with the next video. I'll see you guys then.